Hi everybody and welcome to SA Rugby Super Brew Predictions. I have the usual suspects with me, guys Associ and uh, <laughs> Mark Yohane and James Dalton. Hi um, Kevin. Hi James. Hello Marky. Hello James here. Let's get it out the way straight up. <laughs> yeah, let's let's You told it. us all about the Stormers. <laughs> the Stormers are they've they've been nicknamed the Breeze. <laughs> From Stormers to the Breeze. <laughs> well, James, you know this. You did, you did, you did tell us though. You did pick the the you did pick the Stormers to beat the Blues last week. So, but you have told us that there's some cracks in the armor potentially. So, wax lyrical, brother. This the floor is yours. Well, you know what I I hate to say I told you so, but I did tell you so. <laughs> uh, emphatically, every week. <laughs> Yeah, I think they were just totally, not I think, they were totally outsmarted by the Blues. Um, they slipped 38 tackles, and we all know that they've uh, based their, their success thus far on a good defensive system, and that came unstuck. Um, and I said, you know, you cannot defend week in and week out. Eventually you're going to get a team that are going to break your tackles, play a lot more direct rugby, and they were exposed. Um, but hopefully it, it, uh, they can turn it around. Um, but I think it's going to be uphill yeah, for them. You know, the Hurricanes, they, they dominated emphatically. They the Blues? The, no, 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 I'm saying their first game. Oh, the first game. Okay. Um, and then they played, they played the, the, the Bulls and they battled with territory and possession. They marginally beat the Lions where they also battled with possession and territory. This game, they were dominated in all aspects of the game. So, uh, so let's hope that this is not a trend for them um, because, again, you know, they've lost a bit of Steph now as well. So that's a massive for them. Yeah, for sure. And, and has the Blues shown other, other teams the blueprint on how to beat the Stormers then? Well, I mean, if you look on that performance, you'd certainly think so. I mean, we've been singing lyrical about how good the Stormers are and the Blues made them look mediocre. And, and, and again, we've said that the Blues are probably the worst of the New Zealand sides, but they certainly didn't look like that on Saturday. Yeah, I think they... I, well, I think the Highlanders are probably the worst of the New Zealand sides, but the Blues... <laughs> yeah. The Blues uh, aren't, aren't rated as a good team, but then they don't have that bad of a record, do they, this year? Well, on the road this year, they've got a good record. They've won three on the road. Yeah. Uh, they won, uh, they won in, our, in, in Australia against the Waratahs, comfortably by 20 points. Snuck that last minute at Loftus, and then absolutely destroyed the Stormers. And Neil McDonald said it's the best performance that team has put together under his guidance in 18 months. Yeah. Uh, James and I were speaking a bit earlier about it. To beat a rush defence, you need a good stepper or players capable of changing the lines of attack. And they did that particularly well, and especially with Ioni playing at centre. And, and they took the Stormers one out every time. Yeah. They, they kind of played with as much width as Newlands can give you. Mm. And... It surprised the Stormers. They, they, they look like a team uh, at, in terms of players that were underdone mentally for this game. Mm -hmm. And I think they've also become a bit spoiled with their physicality uh, yeah. and getting the scrum penalties. They didn't get one scrum penalty in this game. Uh, they, they kind of struggled with the physicality and they were, they were tossed around like rag dolls. I tried to speak to Dobbo this week about it, but I think he was in the States with Deontay Wilder. Uh, LAUGHTER <laughs> Just uh, when, when, <laughs> like, how do you recover from an absolute bitch slapping oh, yeah, and a beating, yeah. you know? And uh, yeah, they, they took a beating and it's going to be hell of an interesting next weekend when they play the Sharks in Durban. They've got this week to do a bit of soul searching. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a part of me that thinks they, 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 I'm sure they would have wished they were coming out this Saturday to kind of correct the runs. Mm -hmm. But another week and they take another beating away from home and then they go on the road in a couple of weeks and they got a hell of a hard tour. Brumbies... Crusaders, Crusaders and Chiefs. Chiefs. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much that they lost that one game, it's the manner with which really they lost correct. it. And they yeah. took a, a, a beating and there's some serious questions asked about the character of that side now. Well, what was, what was, what was stand out to me is they were very lethargic. So, um, you know, you could even see when they got beaten, turning around, they, they had no desire. You know, they were dominated at the breakdown totally. And, and, and the Blues, I believe, just brought a lot more intensity mm -hmm. to that game. And, you know, for the Stormers to be acknowledged as, as, as being the most dominant super rugby team in South Africa, to perform at that level was not good. Um, 
But yes, let's not uh, over let's not overcook it. I think that you know, if it wasn't for the bounce of a ball or here or there, bad refereeing decision. Just kidding, Bruce. <laughs> just kidding. It's about uh, to slap you, Kevin. Yeah, no, I know. I could feel the I could feel the heat. But um, we're talking about heat there, Kev. Okay, uh, last week uh, when uh, when uh, Sir Bellis and Atla was here, and we had a chat to him in the canteen, and you asked him how's it going, and he said, well. Uh, the tra training session we had today in the, or yesterday in the heat and how hard it was and that you said, well, the game can only be easy. And there's, there's a part of me that also wonders, did they put in too much in the week in these, in these weather conditions that, that they had nothing left in the tank? Because it was so lethargic. It was... Yeah. It's, how, how, hot was it, no legs. how hot was it on Tuesday uh, last week here? It was 40 degrees. Yeah. And uh, so, Dobbo, give the boys a bit of time out. Yeah. Take them to Ruby Castile, not for a training session, but for a lunch. I believe they're going and to be at Vasco's on uh, on Thursday for a luncheon. So, and this maybe little the promo can... is brought to you by James <laughs> Bolts and Resident. No, no. So Vasco's. hopefully, hopefully they can, you know, just unwind a bit and be a little bit more relaxed. Although they've got to buy, mm. um, you know, maybe just, uh, you know. Get back to the basics, mentally yeah, and look, physically a bit. I agree. The only thing that, that, I, that, that, that I can give them a bit of leeway with this is all the injuries. I mean, they've had, some, yes. they've had a lot of injuries this year. But every team has injuries, huh? Yeah, I As agree. As Heineke says, it's not ballet. It's a contact sport. <laughs> <laughs> what's, he, what's he doing now? I don't know. Fired from somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, they, you know, they've lost. Uh, Manani's been a, a, a big injury for, for, mm. for them, huh? At the same time, guys, you know, they've got, they've got Springboks in there, but it's not the Springbok squad. And I don't understand, you know, everybody's saying, yes, they got Springboks that won the World Cup, but it's still not the Springbok team. No. The Stormers are not the Springbok team. And that's what everybody's forgetting. There's too much emphasis on saying these box played in the World Cup, they won the World Cup, therefore they are equally as good as the Springbok. No, it's a Springbok team with a squad of the best players from around the world in South Africa yeah. and a Stormers team uh, representative of the, of the Western Cape. Well, what's frustrating for me is, is, is how inept they are on, on attack. They seem devoid of, of any, yeah. anything. Well, I think that starts when we spoke, and I think he's a supremely talented fly, uh, Damien Willemse. Uh, we spoke early in the week, uh, Money Man and myself, and it was, Clearly. is it that second season blues? You know, people have started to work out where his step is. Is he trying to create a seven-pointer out of every touch that he has on the what, ball. What for me is more standard, sorry to talk over you, but I have to, is that defensively, <laughs> he's, he's been shown up. His defense, to me, is the weakest part of his game. And I have to say that, uh, looking at the Blues game, um, with Herschel Yankees as well. Is the defense is weak, and if you're going to get teams running at you, mm. and you're going to miss 38 tackles, and you're going to have guys that are, are not uh, putting their bodies on the line defensively, um, then... Which it's I find surprising because he's six foot and his defense was one of his strengths last year when he came mm. into the side, be it playing 15 mm. or 10. So let's put it also down to, because I love the Stormers, all right? I love the Bulls more, but I love the Stormers. <laughs> let's put it down. And as you can see by my predictions, because uh, James asked for a table. So yeah, we let's, let's put up the predictions. No, no, no. I, I suggested then John Ray called it a table and you shat yeah. on my head. <laughs> I did say James gets one right and he wants a table and then he left our group. But... Uh, Money man on 75%. 75.8. Yeah, James. In the middle where I belong. Strong in the second. What's it, 60? 66.7. Yeah, and I've had a kind of bulls-like start to the year. Uh, coming in at 54%. Mm. And I don't know how they feel every Monday morning when they go to their video session and that big graph yes. comes up. So uh, I've taken a few flyers. A slow start. I would like to think I can only go up, but... Who knows? Maybe I'll even go down. Well, you know what? Well, if, yeah. if you carry on like this, you might be sitting on the floor the next show. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I can't say one thing. Categorically, without <laughs> doubt, this has been the most difficult super rugby season to predict. And, I, and why is that? Is it, is it because there's parity in the league now? Is it because of the exodus of players? Why is, why, why, yeah, I look at the games this week from a betting point of view and from a super group point of view. And this, you know, from a betting point of view, it's an absolute nightmare. I don't see anything that jumps out at me and goes, yeah, they've got that wrong. You know, it's, it's people, the teams are beating teams. Australian mm. teams are winning in New Zealand. The, 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 the Sunwolves have uh, opened the season with a win. The Blues are winning in South Africa. Got yeah. the Waratahs yeah. beating the Lions. <laughs> <laughs> got everyone beating the Lions. <laughs> what is it? Do, do, do you have any insight on that for us, guys? Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. I, I, I don't know. You know, maybe it's just the competition is not 
so high on our radar. There's not uh, the abundance of rock stars in the competition or the league anymore. And yes, there's been a lot of change over in terms of coaches and a lot of a lot of the teams have got an abundance of young talent. So I don't know, you know, if, if that creates inconsistency in the performances week week to week. But we've seen there's been some massive upsets thus far uh, up until now, and I expect a lot more. There's more mediocrity in a lot of the teams than there is excellence. Mm. And I think if you took those teams and stuck them into the uh, European leagues, I would probably say five or six of the Super Rugby teams would, would function, and maybe three would get through to the last eight in Europe at the moment. But I think a lot of them would struggle. Mm. And, uh, and the class of play isn't quite there. I mean, we were chatting to someone uh, early in the week. He, James, you weren't there, but he came over to me at a coffee and he says, please tell Money Man to get it right this week because I've only got one bet left. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you guys are bankrupting me. <laughs> and his team was, but my problem is which team is shitter yeah, <laughs> on the day? Yeah. Which one is going to be worse? And so, uh, so, yeah, I think it's a lot of that. And first year after a World Cup cycle is always a very kind of uh, difficult and, and, and iffy year. And sometimes you'll find that those youngsters that are coming in this year are the stars in the making for the next, mm. next two seasons. But generally, on a whole, I think the standard of rugby has been pretty, pretty the ordinary. The standard in the super competition for me over the last couple of years has, mm. has been on the, on the decline significantly. And even more concerning is you know, looking at being world, world champions, how the South African teams performed specifically in the, in the last weekend. Well, I mean, it's, I, it's not been good, defensively, tactically, um, but did you expect anything different from a from a team coach by uh, what's his name? Pot, Porter Human. Porter Human. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 nothing. No, no, just no, he's, he's, on an, he's not the most inspiring no, uh, chap. No, not at all. I um, think I think he's also out of his generation in terms of uh, assessing the, the the modern needs and requirements of the modern game. I just think when you get a side like the Jaguars, who didn't play particularly well, no. they played in spurts. And they were still comfortably 15 points better, scored five or six tries. At the cathedral, the lofters, I mean, there were about 12 people there as well. It's just awful to see that. And, you know, we spoke about uh, crowd attendance and Dobbo spoke about it earlier to get people back to Newlands. People will only come watch a winning team. Yeah. It's been proven time and again. And, uh, and again, I mean, we, we saw the Stormers obsessing with style of play before the Blues game and all that crap they got into their heads. Oh, you're winning, but you're not winning excitingly and you're not winning. Winning is winning. Yeah, and once you win, the bells and whistles come. And I, I just feel, you know, when I look you, at the consistency know. that there's not in the South African game, and I think that's what Rassi spoke about post the World Cup. Can we kick on and be consistent? Because that's when New Zealand has got it right for the best part of 10 years. Do you not, do you not also think, guys, that... I mean, you can understand the, the Springbok team plays a certain style based on the players and their ability to do so. Mm. Now you have in your super rugby teams, not with maybe as much talent from number one to 15 or including, you know, the players on the field. Now you're trying to play a Springbok type game plan, but you don't have the skill level to play that. And maybe that's where you also become a little bit unstuck. And, and I see that specifically uh, more so with the rush defence. I think we've been, we've been exposed considerably um, at that point, and we should also learn to, you know, in in in, in the twenty two, is you know, guard the guard, shatter the inside shoulder, and use the touch line as an excellent defender. Mm. And we're not doing that because when we get that rush wrong, we're getting beaten on the outside all the time. Mm. Yeah, well, you <clears throat> you've got guys with different levels of experience at Super Rugby, right? But trying to fit into systems, but you know, saying that the Stormers' rush defense worked perfectly in the first three home games. They gave up seven points. Yeah, and so. I don't know, James. It's, it's, it seems to me that if, when you look at the Bulls and the Lions, we said at the beginning of the year they're going to finish bottom. So to be talking them up, not you, but I mean, but to, to have any expectations other than that they are two probably decent varsity cup sides with, with a couple of, spring, with a couple mm. of old spring box in there. I mean, that, they're, they're just not good enough. And, um, they're not good enough, but the bottom eight, I'd say, is not good enough to be playing in the term super rugby. Yeah. It's very much a top six, top seven competition. Uh, so you've got the Sunwolves, the Reds, the Rebels, the Highlanders are poor, they've lost 15 players. Uh, yeah. The second tier is very much a second division when it comes to the traditional strengths of Super Rugby. Um, you know, that's why I think it's, we've been pleasing to see the Sharks with such a young team flourish and come through. Admittedly, they had one of the nicer away draws in who they played. Yeah, they, uh, they've, they, let's be honest, the Sharks have been brilliant, but... 
They've had a weak schedule. You know, the, the Rebels away, a poor Highlander side away, the Reds, who are the rubble Reds for most of it, uh, and the Hurricanes, the one game that you thought could go either way, and the Hurricanes travel back from Buenos Aires to beat them. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, you know, and I was, I was very dismissive of that Hurricanes in that first game. Felt they came here with no pack. They do lack mongrel in their pack, uh, and that physicality. Always had good backs. But I remember a couple of years ago, they took 50 points in the first game in Canberra and ca ended up winning the tournament. Uh, and are they going to be a team that tends to grow? Because it's a long season. Mm -hmm. um, so well, they're certainly showing that trend. But in the same time, you know, yes, the Sharks have maybe had uh, the weaker draw on, 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 the, on the way uh, trip to Australasia. But the fact is they're still scoring a lot of tries. And, you know, you can't discount that. If a team's scoring no. tries, no. it's like they're saying cricket, you know, catches win matches. So if you're scoring tries in, in a rugby game, you quite evidently going to land up victorious. Well, you know, the, the, the Sharks have been brilliant this year in terms of the way that they've attacked and the, their play and the way that they're, they're making a no-name pack look pretty, no. pretty, mm. pretty strong. You know, those guys are playing for each other. They seem happy out there. Um, they're playing with, 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 with a smile on their face. Uh, and, of course, it helps when you're winning. But um, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, get into the, let's get into the Super Brew because, we, we, you know, the millennials will be tuning out or starting to play Fortnite or whatever those kids do. Um, <laughs> let's let's have a look at where we stand on the on the on the uh, the Super Brew predictions. Um, you'll see that uh, I am leading. Um, Mark is. That's last. why you call. That's why your name is the Money Man. Apparently, apparently. Okay, Sunwolves <laughs> Brumbies. Let's get into it. Sunwolves are uh, Brumbies are favoured by twenty eight and a half points. Um, uh, with the Sunwolves being the home team. Thoughts? I think the, uh, the Sunwolves will take a beating, but not by that much. I don't think the Brumbies are a good enough side to put them away by 28 plus. I'd say between 15 and 20 points to the Brumbies. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you, Mark. I, the Brumbies probably rest a few players. I have a rotation on that game. And uh, the Sunwolves at home are a, bit, are, are, are a much better team than they are. Uh, on the road, so I'm going to say that the Sun will the, the Brumbies by 18. But they are they are playing in Australia uh, because of the coronavirus. Yeah, the coronavirus. But they're not, they, in, they're not playing. They're not playing in Canberra. Canberra, yeah. Okay. And they're playing in Sydney as the curtain raiser to the Waratahs. Yeah. Really? How's okay, that, well. that uh, comment? You know, I survived the rave scene in the 80s. Now I've got to be scared of a light beer virus, no coronavirus. <laughs> but you know, Corona's not a light beer, actually. Yeah, James. <laughs> I just want to say to Kevin that I may have a 54% prediction record, but I am a wealth of knowledge when it comes to who's playing. <laughs> <laughs> that you are, Mark, and we rely heavily on that. Thank and you. 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 No, I'm, 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 I'm going to go Brumbies by 25. I think they got their tails in the air. The Sunwolves have bled points, uh, 130, 140 points in two games. I can't see that changing. Okay. Uh, Crusaders, yeah. Reds. Crusaders favoured by 22 and a half points. Is that game in Christchurch, Mark? Christchurch, yeah. yeah. Um, Tom Mock. <laughs> <laughs> I have a 54% chance of getting that right. <laughs> um, guys, it come on. Crusaders. Yeah, Crusaders. Crusaders. Crusaders by 20. Yeah, I'll back that. Yeah, I'll look at 22 and a half. I think the bookies are, are, are pretty spot on. I'll, I'll say the Crusaders by 24. Okay. Uh, Waratahs versus the Chiefs um, in Sydney. Chiefs by a whisker, by five. I think I'm going to go Waratahs, yeah. I think I'm going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons. Let me just, let me just mark you down to 63%. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm why not, you. man? I'm you know what? I've, I've gone Sun Wolves in my infinite stupidity. So you know what? I'm going to roll the dice here on the Waratahs. Well, I, 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 I like the Chiefs to, to, to pip it by five, six. Mm -hmm. uh, Hurricanes, Blues. Hurricanes! Hello. I remember we went on tour and they were singing Hurricanes, Hurricanes. And John Allen thought they were singing Laurie Mays, Laurie Mays. <laughs> Really? That's uh, why he didn't last long in the Springbank bumper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, 
Laurie Mayne. <laughs> so is it Laurie Mayne versus the Blues? <laughs> Will we pick, be taking Laurie Mayne's or, or the Blues? <laughs> Hurricanes Blue is always one of those great New Zealand derbies because mm. they play very similar styles. Yeah. Uh, I think the travel back is going to count against the, the Blues. The Hurricanes got a little bit of form, momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got the Hurricanes to win that by, by eight points. Hurricanes by eight. Okay. James? I think I'm going to go Blues by five. Okay. Well, I'll be in second place by next week. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, guys? Go, go for the form teams. Okay. Go for the form uh, teams. Considering uh, the Blues beat the Stormers, who you said are undoubtedly probably the world champions. At this uh, stage. Champions in waiting. In intergalactic yeah. champions, yeah, I yeah, said. Yeah. said. <laughs> um, I'm going to go Hurricanes by four. Uh, Rebels, Lions. <laughs> <laughs> Both equally cuck. <laughs> No, one's Maybe more cut than the other. <laughs> I'll sit on the fence in this one. Draw. Draw. <laughs> I'll go Rebels at home to win by, by seven. Yeah. I don't think the travel will affect them back from the South Island of New Zealand. <laughs> uh, I'm going to second that, Mark. I'm going to. Thanks, James. I'm nice to Thanks, both. Over the finish line. Yeah, I, I can't see the Lions beating anybody <laughs> this year unless they're playing the Sunwolves. Um, <laughs> And even that might be a stretch if the coronavirus <laughs> dies down. I'm going to take the Rebels to win by 10. Um, Sharks, Jaguars. This to me is the game of the week. Yeah. And uh, huge interest, obviously. The, the Sharks tearing up the league. And if they, if they win this game, they'll have a stranglehold on the uh, South African Conference. Saying that. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, to me, the Sharks are a better team a lot of the times traveling away than they yeah, are at home. Correct. Correct. Which, which is because of the humidity and you know, that, doesn't, that doesn't lend itself well to playing the brand of rugby that they've been um, playing on the road. I, my concern in this <clears> game is the, the, the Sharks as a team have been good collectively but I do believe they are a little bit inexperienced and light in the forwards. Mm -hmm. I possibly think the Jaguars can dominate them quite excessively up front. And if they manage to get that right, they could land up sneaking a win. Mm. Um, but they're both good teams and they both score in a lot of tries. But as a South African, I'd go for the Sharks by, by a small margin with this game. Are I you going think. with your heart and not your head on this one? I'm going with my heart. And you know, I have a very big heart. I, I do know that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with my head on this one. I'm going the Jaguars to actually win quite easily, 11 points. Okay, there we go. That's why you're going to stay in position number three. This is when I announce my comeback. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, look, this, is, this, is, this <clears throat> game for me is incredibly tough to, to call because you've got a Jaguars team. Well, we don't know what the team is yet. Do we, has it been announced? No. no. So if they put out the team that played the Stormers, the, the Sharks will win quite handily. Mm. If they put out the team that beat the, the Bulls, I think there's a one point. It's 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 a it's a penalty goal at the end of the game, one way or the other. And if I had to bet, oh jeez. What's your super brew? Well, I'm trying to figure it out, Mark. You know, I just don't rush into these decisions. I rushed into my marriage. I'm not going to rush into a super brew. <laughs> All right, Nas, we need an answer. That. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to I'm going to take the Sharks to win by one point. Moving along. <laughs> um, well, I forgot what you said. What did you say? <laughs> what did I say? On the, on the Sharks, Jags. No, I said I'd go for, I'd go for the Sharks by, by three to oh, five points. Okay. Then we have the Bulls versus the Highlanders. It's like, it's like picking up two gym socks and smelling which one's worse. <laughs> how do you, how do, you know? Has the left been to the gym more often? <laughs> well, you know, you know it's, it's, it's six of one, half dozen of another. Well, look, the, the Bulls, what I like about the Bulls is their slogan is give it horns. And I think they're getting horns at this stage. So, <laughs> so right. no, I, don't, I don't have much faith no, in their I don't have much faith in their I had a great no. chirp on my site the other day. One of the guys, there was a, you know, the fight in the stands made, made, uh, made some headlines on SA Rugby and I posted it on Money Man. And someone said, allegedly, that was three guys trying to get out of the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. What a great chirp yeah. we did that. Um, <laughs> Bulls Highlanders. 
I'm going for the Bulls to kickstart their season. <laughs> <laughs> I, I is just, it, is I, it one of those petrol or not? It's like, it's, like, it's like trying to kickstart a hairdryer. <laughs> I just have to back the Bulls to come good one weekend because the I don't really like my Highlanders as a no, team. I, I never enjoyed them. Uh, never enjoyed the way they play. Mm. Uh, and I just don't enjoy their, the kind of the characters that make up that squad. Uh, and I'm a diehard Bulls supporter. Mm. I see you in blue today. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going for the Bulls. Mornay staying to take us back to the glory days. Kick some. Now I'm going to think goal. With, with my emotions and I'm going for the Bulls. Jim Sock, Jim Sock. <laughs> I'm going to have to go. I, Look, I don't know. Until, until I see the teams announced, you, you, if I bet on any games, I, po I post it on Facebook. So I'm going to say that the Highlanders by one point. Okay. Just based on... on, on when are we going to actually call a draw? We no, no one's like... No one does that. Done that. No, no one does on. that. We have to win it. Eh? <laughs> yeah. 54.8. It's not a boxing <laughs> match. <laughs> anyway, guys, I want to thank you for coming in. Um, and uh, can't wait for next week's show with, uh, with the Sharks and the Stormers coming up. Let me ask one question. If you had to put a bet on that game now, who, where would your money go? Stormers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm signing out. Dobbo, Stormers. I refuse to talk about the Stormers any longer. Okay. I'm done. All right, James. Thanks, guys. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. And let's, nice uh, table. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, Gibby. Thanks, James. Cheers, man.